Right, come with me, and we're off on a little bit of a breakdown. Let's get the keys for the back truck. Literally, for the back truck. Let's get going. Well, luckily for me, this vehicle now isn't too far away from the workshop. Um, probably about a two, three minute drive. Um, a couple of minutes and we'll be there, I should imagine. Anyway, I did miss a little bit because it, because of safety reasons, one thing or another, I didn't want to do any content on the side of the road. But it is a little Peugeot 207, I almost said 206, and it has got the clutch failed in it. And you can smell it. This is a sort of smell that sticks up your nostrils for days. Anyway, let's get the vehicle up in the air and we're going to make a start on it. Now we've got the vehicle kind of raised. Uh, first things first, as always, battery, battery tray and the air box out of the way. And that'll gain us access to the top of the gearbox. Ta-da! With a little bit of magic, we have now got a lot of access. We've removed the gear cable up the back there. 113 mil, which goes down there into the starter motor, the earth and the reverse light switch. And then everything else now is underneath. Now we've got the vehicle fully raised, we've got both the front wheels off it. Uh, I've removed it in a splash guard from the passenger side. And we need to move around now to this, like, I don't know what you, what you call them. It's not a chassis leg, is it? It's just a support brace, I should imagine. Uh, and then we can get the dry shaft out, uh, get the gearbox oil drained. Yeah, let's crack on. Now once we've removed all the ancillaries and shafts, you name it, everything is now out of the way. We've undone the bell housing bolts and that gearbox. It's nice and free. All we've got to do now is get it down on the transmission jack. And there you go. With a little bit of magic, that gearbox is now out. And now I'm quite surprised on this that it hasn't damaged the guide tube. But for saying that, it wasn't making a horrible rattling noise like it normally did. And you can see there how hot and how bad that clutch has been slipping because it's turned it blue. And in fact, it's still very hot to touch now. All we've got to do now is just remove these T30s or T40s. I can get this clutch plate and pressure plate off. There you have it. That is one clutch plate and pressure plate removed. Now, I was half expecting when I took the clutch out to be uh, like clutch fibres everywhere, you know, like you do, almost like a dead cat sort of thing. Um, it's not that bad, even though it has. One side's shiny, the other side's completely failed. And there we go, that is a brand new LUK clutch kit. Uh, we've got a clutch plate, pressure plate, and a brand new thrust bearing. Let's put it onto this vehicle. And there you have it, that is a new clutch plate and pressure plate fitted to the engine now, and also a new thrust bearing. Uh, the clutch plate was 20 newton meters. Right, let's get this gearbox back in. And there you have it, with a little bit of magic, uh, that gearbox now is back in place as it should be, everything's tightened up. We're going to drop it down now, tighten the dry shaft nuts up, get the wheels back on, and then we can finish off at the top. Finally, it is all back together as it should be. I haven't done too bad really, considering I only picked it up probably about a quarter to two ish. Right, let's get in the car now. I'll give it a big start, Rooney. Always give your foot a good pump on the clutch. You probably can't see it because these dark nights are absolutely horrendous now. Uh, make sure you've got no restrictions. Give it a big start. Make sure you've got the door shut. Right, the door, right? Yes, the door's fine. And we have now got drive. And there you have it, another one rescued and fixed. I'm going to take it down the road now for a little bit of a test drive, make sure that there's nothing hanging off it or falling off it, and the car's driving as it should. So anyway, let's get it in.